Welcome to the Omnia Soul Art Show, the Glitch Art Video Podcast, hosted by Omnia Soul. Episode. Uh, anyways, let me introduce you to the show. Welcome to the Omnia Soul Art Show. Uh, I wanted to have Happy you to be on. here for the audience at home. This is. Uh, do you want to go by your name? Yeah, yeah. This is wanna... Wes. Cool. I didn't know if you wanted a, a pen name. Oh no, my you're name is credited as Wes, Schnitker. the Animal Crossing expert. Uh, Wes Schnitker, been living the Animal Crossing life for 21 years now, or actually 20 years, I guess, almost. Yeah, has it been? It, it really has. It released in the U.S. in April on April 14th, 2002. Um, the original version in Japan came out like a year or two prior on N64. So okay, they didn't get yeah, their GameCube yeah. version until two years after us. Funny enough. The original version is called, it was called like Animal Town, right? Uh, Animal Forest, the Boots no Animal Mori, Forest. which people that actually speak Japanese would say that I just butchered it. Um, how, do you, how do you say it in Japanese? Uh, do, do Butsu no Mori. Nice. That's a, and that's the name of the uh, unreleased anime film, which we're actually uh, part of the, what we're glitching tonight is Ooh, bootleg. Yeah. yeah, the bootleg of the anime on VHS combined with some scenes from the GameCube game as well as the I got an adapter so I did some glitching on the Switch game as well. And are you playing right now? Uh, the Switch game specifically? I yeah. am not, but I can always kick it on. I was playing oh, some yeah, Final if you, Fantasy if you too. want to, either either way we can do a, a more conventional interview or we can be playing at the same time, whatever works best for you. Um, um, my ADHD brain doing two things at once is sometimes a little hard, but Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's focus on the interview then, and then we can play uh, we can play some Animal Crossing afterwards. So yeah. So the reason I wanted to uh, do well, I wanted to glitch Animal Crossing in general, but I really wanted to talk about because we have a shared town on the original GameCube version, which is called Utopia. And the way they do that, I live in you know I live in Chicago. You live in the the St. Louis area, St. Louis city. Um, and outside what's up? We share this town by mailing each other this memory card back and forth. Like they used to do back in the day. That was a good thing with the old school game is you could just go, you know, to your friend's house, bring the memory card. Now you can just jump on a plane in the game, go to, go to someone's house. But Utopia for a long time was whenever I made an animal crossing town, that would be the name of my town for the reason that, uh, to me, the game is very much, Animal Crossing in general is somewhat of a utopia. There is aspects of capitalism, but I feel like overall the game tends to be more of like a critique of capitalism. Mm -hmm. And they removed the cops in the newest game. So yes, yes, they removed the cops. There is like the shopping aspect. There is the debt, but even those aspects seem to be they're so much easier than real life. Tom Nook's loans are interest free. Yeah, completely interest free. And there, there is this, there's not as much alienation from labor as there is in the real world. But I will say, uh, sorry to cut you off, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say like, if you need money to pay off Tom Nook, you go shake some trees or you go fishing. Yeah, it's not like other people's property is the tree next to their house. It's just there's fruit on it, so you yeah. can take it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's more shared in that sense. But that's, that's something I always point out to all the new uh, players of Animal Crossing that kind of you know discovered it with New Horizons is that the game of 20 years ago and even some of the iterations afterwards is a very different game yeah. from, from New Horizons. And it's not that they iterated on it and added things. Each new game has a different feel, different 
a lot of different aspects to it, but the original game and uh, you know one or two after it have a very different feel because they had this very strange, uh, uh, honestly, like a lot in some ways a lot more work put into them than New Horizons even has. While we still have, you know, amazing changes to being able to finally actually edit our outdoors to every specification we could want largely, um, of course, stands some some technical details and amounts of stairs and bridges. But in the original game, like on that note, Tom Nook used to talk about sending his goons after you if he didn't pay back his yeah. debt. Yeah. And like um, certain aspects that are lost that I always encourage people not just as a oh you should go play uh, these games just another history but you should go play these games because in some ways they're they, while they might be in like entirely more simplistic than New Horizons and there's mechanical changes that have greatly improved the game some of the older games including the GameCube version is better than New Horizons in some yeah. ways yeah my biggest point is that while in GameCube there may not be uh, a whole lot going on in your town um, in the sense of the outdoors, you being able to edit it, which I find is the thing that I do the most whenever I'm playing the game now. Mm -hmm. Um, The original game had so much more life. And the biggest point for me is that the music of the original games, including the first game, is immaculate. Yeah. It is. it, It drives you to continue to play the game and it... The way that they composed, which they did for later games too, but they do an amazing job of composing a song for every hour of the day. And then a song similar but different for every season of the year. So different songs or different hours of the day have a different tune if the weather is different, if it's snowing, if it's raining. Mm -hmm. And that's something that was really lost in the new game is that they force you to listen to the main theme song of New Horizons, which drives you crazy until you finally hit City Hall after like 50 hours. Yeah, yeah, you finally unlock the new music, but even the new music is like... It's not that good. No, it's not a, like... there. I, I still like it, but compared to the GameCube music, it's it's not. And even the, the new Leaf music, I feel like, was better. In preparation for this, I actually went back and started to listen through New Horizons hour by hour. And while there are like, you know, there's differences, there's, you know, of course the funkier stuff happens in the middle of the night. Yeah, there's some track, the 1 a.m. track hit. Throughout the day, some of the tracks are kind of indistinguishable from each other. Whereas if you go back and listen to 2 p.m. on GameCube, it's got its own, it's, you know, each track has really got its own life. And Absolutely. that's that. The weirdness of those songs and the weirdness of the game, that some of which we've lost, really is what made the game, you know, what it was. I think, you know, the gyroids and the uh, and the music and the attitudes. Your villagers actually had attitudes. They really yeah. kind of scaled them down moving forward through the games. Yeah, it's it's not as bad as well, nothing's as bad as Pocket Camp in the sense of like they went with microtransactions in Pocket Camp. So like Pocket Camp is a dystopia. It's like use your real money to buy fake furniture. Right. Where that you're I mean you're still spending money on Animal Crossing, but it's the one time game purchase. And if you want some merchandise or whatnot, but it's not like you need leaf tickets if you want your campsite to look like this but also like on the the conversation about just the general dialogue of the characters yeah like everything is nerfed because they didn't want to they don't want the characters to be mean but i mean that means they completely stripped away any like personalities or like i know they're animals but humanity from the animals and they had a longer what felt like a life like a daily yeah uh, conversational lifespan mm-hmm. per day like if they got angry at you or they got angry at another villager in the original games they stayed angry all day and your interactions with them were completely changed and you would have different dialogue or more varied dialogue yeah uh where yeah whereas the new one it's like they're, they they're done with their anger very quickly it's not as bad as pocket camp where they they still definitely repeat dialogue but cop pocket camp it's like they don't even break up the characters in terms of like their different group like whether jock or like cute or anything it's just the dialogue's just repeated every like 15 to 20 minutes it's like it was such a we all wanted the the handheld game but there could have and when it first came out i was i was a 
astounded by the graphics and i know we both played for like a long time but i it you know and it was i think it's exactly what nintendo wanted it to be and there's still some people that stick to that game which i guess more power to you i get that it's still got a big fan base but um, I think a lot of people kind of signed on to the whole franchise with that game and then didn't realize how much was stripped from it in that. Yeah. And Nintendo even, you know, their strategy, internal strategies labeled that and other games as a gateway to the real game. So I knew that, that game came out. Sense. Yeah. We'd been waiting almost 10 years. We'd been waiting 10 years by the time the New Horizons came out. But by the time two years ago or three years ago, whenever Pocket Camp came out, uh, it was enough to satiate us and Nintendo was, you know, it was leaked that they were just saying that these were, you know, good gateways to get people hooked on to, you know, our franchise and then introduce the actual games later on. But we had to wait quite a bit longer. And then we saw, even with waiting, um, unfortunately, they had kind of shipped while the game was New Horizons is amazing. There's still many aspects of the game that were there day one. Every, yeah. almost, almost every update we've had with the game weren't updates in the old games they were just already a part of the game once they shipped yeah it's it's funny i don't i understand like everything got like pushed back even in terms of like updates and everything but it's funny the amount of stuff that they they thought like oh this slow rollout of like updates over time will keep people playing but it hasn't in the sense of like i feel like a lot of people have dropped off. I know I dropped off for a really long time and I, I've gotten back into it, not daily, but just like every once in a while. And it is still fun and I love the mechanics of it. Um, but there, yeah, there's so many features that are missing that I feel like I wish they would just already add back in. Like, when are we getting the roost? Like, I need to see Brewster. Brewster has been out of business. We've all been affected by... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Small businesses have been ruined, both uh, physically and digitally. In some aspects, I get that each they are meaning for each game, and I don't think they expected because Nintendo's story with each game that's released on the Switch is they are continuously surprised by whatever game, Mario Kart, any Mario game, any you know Pokemon yeah. game. They're all the best-selling versions that they ever released when they released them on Switch. Yeah. Um, so I don't think Nintendo planned, you know, if they had had the forethought to see that this would be a big entry for a huge swath of the population, also not knowing that it would coincide with COVID and work so perfectly, that they would have probably made the game, I would think, maybe more similar to the previous games and that they had more like that, like yeah. Omnook Shop iterated over time. But I think when they decided to go with the island model, it makes sense because, you know, each game has been a different setting. Thing, and that setting has had its own restrictions and its own additions. Yeah. And with the island of New Horizons, I think they thought, oh man, if it builds up to Nookingtons, it's going to look weird on a little, you know, desert island. But I, I understand that. At the same time, they didn't do that with the museum. The museum Agreed. takes up so much less space in every other game. But as soon as because it's a cartoon, you don't care that as soon as you walk in, it's massive. And that updated so that updated that first weekend. I remember we went on I went on pandemic or I was applying for pandemic unemployment that Monday. Same. And at first we had been told like, oh, it's probably gonna only last two weeks. We'll all be back. But like in, in my mind, I was like, I know shit's gonna get bad and I know like this I thought it could be the end of the world you know and in a sense it was an end of a lot of things um but to have Animal Crossing that weekend and to have you too and to like be able to like you organize this discord to jump on the discord chat like at any hour because we don't have jobs anymore so we were just you know just playing we were working in Animal Crossing it couldn't have dropped at a better time and I know we were like spending you know we were on i think almost consecutively for two days straight yes and, absolutely and yeah. you know it was it couldn't have dropped at a better time and like while i was bummed that it was pushed back i'm so happy it dropped then because i lost my job <clears throat> i wasn't sure i was getting a new job because there had been some fluke with my new job where they sent me a rejection email uh -huh. so i just thought i'm not gonna have a job i'm gonna have to apply for unemployment but i've got unending time with the new animal crossing and i've been waiting yeah. 10 years for this like i it, it was a terrible time for most people but it was i could it was the thing i had been waiting for most in gaming for you know 10 years and um i don't think we'll have to wait that long for the next iteration being that it has sold 
so many copies on this console. Well, of yeah. course, Nintendo will, will keep selling them, but um, it's, uh, yeah. One tidbit, I don't know if this is kind of off on tangent. Did you know that the, as far as I had recently read, the, the game was originally intended to be uh, take some part in space? Really? Like new new horizons meant like Oh, I hope they still add that. The well that would make sense in the sense of like they've always had an aspect of aliens going back yeah. to like the very first game, because don't you find like a flying saucer or something in the very first game? Or is that new lead? That's that was only in um that was in uh the one iteration of the game I haven't played too much, which was Wild World. Wild World, and yes, I played that. So I, I played Animal Crossing. I'm a little bit older than you. I played Animal Crossing when I was like 13 on the first one, the GameCube. And I really enjoyed it because I was like very, very bad at video games always. I always have been. Uh, I don't know if it's a hand-eye coordination thing. I'm just like shooting games give me anxiety. <laughs> like I can't, I can't do it if I'm going to like lose. Um, and you can't really lose in Animal Crossing other than like get bit by a tarantula and wake up in front of your house but um the where was I going with this okay so yes so I played Wild World first on my MacBook in college whoa on a DS emulator I never played the actual DS version but I just like was get, get we'd been waiting for so long for a game and I hadn't I didn't have a 3DS at the time and because I think 3DS had like just come out, but I, I just like really, really wanted to play Animal Crossing and didn't own a GameCube or anything. So yeah, I downloaded an emulator on my Mac and started playing the D. That's how I played Wild World, and it did like the graphics were bad, but it was at least a full Animal Crossing game on like yeah. the phone game, and so it definitely hit a lot of factors. To go back to the aliens, yeah, we were talking about timelines and alien yes so even in the anime the way the anime ends right is that an alien first a fake alien comes down and then a real alien comes down and then there's also the thing in new horizons where it's like friday or saturday night at like what is it 3 a.m it's i think every night at 3 a.m and that's every night at 3 a.m the past same for the past games as well has it always done something weird, or has it always been aliens? It's it's always been aliens. Weird. Trying to reach you. Which, funny enough, I saw somebody's little meme mock-up that was saying that it's actually your parents in the game trying to reach out to you because the alien has the same shape of the, the air quote, human head in, in Animal Crossing, and our characters' heads don't actually match the human models. Yeah. We're weird shaped, and our shapes actually match the aliens on the TV. So, huh. Interesting. So... Because there's no other humans unless you create them, and you're just in this weird little animal world. So it makes you yeah. think: Did you just come from human world on a train to visit animal world, or did you get plopped onto this island and you're being kept there? And the letters being sent to you aren't actually from your mom. They're not actually from your. Whoa. Oh, whoa, my mom. Um, but uh, going back to your, you were talking about your timeline of playing the game. I was just thinking about this as I was uh, looking at our little original copy and uh was trying to think about like where it started and memory like was pulled out of my synapse somewhere that we didn't actually even pick out animal crossing it was due to luckily it was like in the spring of 2002 right after it dropped yeah and my brother i was i don't know 2002 i was seven i think um whatever 1984 seven something like that six or seven and uh this uh, this guy at gamestop or game crazy one of those stores like just recommended it and talked about it operates off of real time every minute an hour in the game is a real day an hour and it changes with the seasons and we were just blown away by that yeah and took it home and literally that was the rest of our lives for that's yeah that that's one thing that i yeah i loved i loved the real-time aspect of it i also like even though i was 13 i was kind of like a stupid kid like i remember the commercials but for some reason i was convinced that like because of the hats with the horns i was convinced that you were an animal too 
And I remember just like asking my friend who was showing me the game for the first time, like, what kind of animal are you? <laughs> and he was like, what are you talking about? Like, you're humans, your neighbors are animals, like you're wearing a hat. <laughs> like, I couldn't put together, I saw the horned hat, and I was just like, I don't understand what animal I'm supposed to be. I mean, it does make you think because the horns don't change whenever you change your clothing. It's just the yeah. pattern on it. So you're like, man, maybe you do have horns. I would like them to do, like, because they have so many clothing options in the new game. It would be cool if they added some, like, throwbacks. You can you have, have the wait, horns really? in the new game. Uh-huh. So, fun tidbit for anybody at home as well. If you take a hat uh, QR code or design okay. code from one of the older games where you still would have had a hat, and you scan it into Animal Crossing, or you you recreate it, or you, if I'm getting that correct in my head here, you will, then whenever you put it on, and you put on that design as a hat in the new game, you'll have the horns attached. Really? So yeah, you can have them in New Horizons. It's like a little Easter egg. I should try that. Yeah, because my, my island is Twin Peaks, and... Um... I wanted I wanted a room that was similar to like the uh, the Black Lodge, the red room. So I got curtains and the curtains I got were from I believe created a new leaf. But yeah, I found it on a QR code of just red curtains. Um, Cuz I didn't want to sit there and like make design with the little pixels. Right. Luckily there is actually a wallpaper that Sahara gives you that's red curtains that are just really? draped as well. Yeah, I can give I you get that cuz that's yeah, that's probably higher quality. I've I've got those in my storage. I'll pull them out. Oh, um, hell yeah. Um, oh, where were we going? In thought? Oh, I was, you were mentioning like, oh, it's kind of a stupid kid talking about the horns. I also feel kind of stupid growing up. And, um, you know, DS didn't come, what, I guess it feels like to me, not long after the GameCube, like the GameCube is still a standard console at the time the DS came uh -huh. out. And I remember my friend and neighbor, uh, him and his sister shared their DS and they played Wild World. And I was kind of a stupid kid in the sense that I thought, like, you know, at that time, it was just like better graphics is what makes a game. And we've definitely yeah. moved past that in this current age. And it's more so the content of the game that makes the game, regardless of what the developers can do with, even if it's 8-bit or 16-bit. Um, but at the time, I was a little stupid kid and I looked at Wild World and I was like, man, that looks so bad when I was watching my friend's, you know, friend play. And I thought, I'm not going to play that. GameCube looks so much better, you know. Uh -huh. and, and then I waited until the Wii version to come out, which uh, City Folk was good, but um, I think a disappointment a bit at that time because they had really yeah. played up the, the interconnective ability of it, blah, 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 and then nobody could really get connected on it. And yeah, I did like City Folk. There are, there are aspects that weren't great about it. Wild World was the first game that introduced... The soundtrack to Wild World is pretty good if you ever go back to listen to it, but it, that also first introduced the roost, and they actually had it you would unlock it and it would be in the basement of the museum. Right. And I always loved that. And I think that was the same in City Folk, right? Yeah. As opposed to, or what, did he have a separate place in City Folk? I know. He, I think that was the same situation in City Folk because DJ KK didn't come in until the DS, the 3DS yes. version. Yes. I like DJ KK as a concept, but it's like, yeah. You think, because the whole thing is like you go there and you can like dance and stuff, but I don't like, did your villagers even like show up really? I don't think I even engaged with it that much. Or is it uh, always kind of like empty? I think I was more focused on just like making my town and my house and everything look cool in that game. I, uh, that game too, I think we've largely waited like, I think 10 year ish spans, a little less between, uh, New or not uh, the the one on the DS to Wild World to mm -hmm. City Folk, but it's been pretty much ten years between most iterations. Or although I think City Folk to D 3DS might have been five or six. I know it was delayed for two years, and I basically I almost ruined New Leaf because I watched every possible video that any Japanese YouTuber put out at that time. Really playing the game because like in preparation we, for it. Did they get it I just, I just, they got it earlier because there was some issue with localizing in the U.S. and they pushed it back almost two years. We were supposed to get it at the same time as Japan, so I was ready. And yeah. Decided. I had, I had, I didn't have a 3DS, so I pre-ordered, and I wasn't making that much money either at the time. But I saved up money and pre-ordered the Animal Crossing 3DS that came out at the time. 
and was so ready. And then ours got pushed back six months, and then I got pushed back another six months, and then I got pushed back another six months. Oh. And I was just like, so yeah, I almost ruined the game because nothing was new for me once I actually started playing oh, it. Oh no. I still love watching um, walkthroughs of like people who uh, did like themed houses that you can do like the dream. Like someone did a, um, a, uh, uh, Miyazaki themed town and so each house was like a different Miyazaki one and so like the spirited away house you went to the basement and it's got all those like big like burners everywhere I... um, yeah really cool so I was like it's funny too because I, I feel like Animal Crossing was because there was the 10 years in between there was a lot of people who didn't realize even before the pandemic just like how big of a game it is because I had I had a friend who like knows a lot about video games and I was like oh yeah I'm waiting because I know they released like an Animal Crossing 3DS I know they're gonna release an Animal Crossing Switch my friend was like I don't think they're gonna do that like downplaying how big of a game it like because he just like didn't know yeah most people think that like it's because while Nintendo did start to change an arc towards a younger audience they've changed that now because they realize how big their audience is Mm -hmm. if anybody pays attention animal crossing is i think their second before new horizons now it's their top selling game i guess behind mario kart because that game goes sells more on one with a switch yeah but uh every iteration of animal crossing uh, though the early games i think were probably less um has been like either the second or first most selling game on each console so yeah i think it's really passed up but also because most people think it's some sort of uh you know game for like a mom or kids yeah because it's like making a home and etc people think it's like some sort of casual game where in actuality there's so many different ways to gamify that game and you yeah. know but also that being said i wouldn't be where i am today in my interest in fashion and interior design and etc if it wasn't for animal crossing back mm-hmm. you know starting it way back then so while those aspects of the game like you know maybe you know other sorts of gamers that play I feel like a lot of gamers play a wide variety of games, but a lot of people think of it as like a casual, like not much content to the game, but it's actually jam packed. There's so much. It, yeah. It all depends on like, on how you play and how you want to play too, you know, cause there was like a meme going around about like someone was complaining about like their boyfriend hadn't done like had had terraforming unlocked for two weeks, but hadn't done anything in it because he's, he was just like, I just love to fish. But it's like, and people thought that was like so funny, but it's like, it's kind of funny, but also like, go for it. I love fishing too. Like that's one thing like with taking large breaks on not playing the game and coming back to it. Sometimes it's like, ah, I don't know. Cause it's like, granted they've nerfed like your, it's funny to even, cause nerfing is usually like with like fighting games or something. With sure. Age. But with like the, the, the neighbor's responses of you haven't been on in a while. It's like, oh, I haven't seen you for this amount of time, but it's not like they're not mad at you. They're not crying. Like in the they old. don't move out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but if you take a long break, you're kind of like, oh, I don't know like what to do when I go back to it. So I just think like, I know this game's going to be fun. And if all else fails, I know I can just go fishing. Like I don't have to like have a set goal. The funniest and- thing I find on the fishing front and like catching bugs and stuff. Once I progress to a certain point in the game where I've unlocked most of the things, my sources of income are usually like fruit, money trees, etc. on repeat, fossils, you know, once you've finished the fossils, the museum, etc. I enjoy the fishing process and love it throughout most of the game, but I found as I've gotten older, like I almost don't fish at all in the new game unless I there is some new fish to catch to you know try and finish the museum yeah. or anything like that like yeah. um, I do I've been doing diving a lot to catch the spider crabs in the last season because those things are massive and terrifying if you don't have any on your island um, but um, I except for when we trade our GameCube memory card back and forth and we play Utopia that game switching from that game to new horizons it's like it gives me brand new eyes on new horizons every time i switch and play a couple hours of the gamecube and then i appreciate the little things of like 
you know, fishing around my island so much more and just the improvements that have been made. It's like I get like those things are like shiny and new and I'm excited about them for a couple hours. Then it kind of wears off and I Mm -hmm. uh, just go back to editing my town and slowly kind of changing it up as I go. Is there a map button on the new game or do you just have to get that on your Nook phone? You have to open your Nook phone as far as I'm aware. Okay, so I've been playing too much of the GameCube because I was playing, yeah, I, w- I was playing the uh, the Switch version today and I just like kept trying to open up the map and not finding the button and then open up my phone. I was like, oh, this is so fr- this is like real life. I have to like <laughs> go, to, go to Google Maps to, <laughs> to find where I'm going. I was thinking about that because even residual, like, you know, I haven't played much of Utopia in, I don't know how long, maybe a couple of months now and uh but for like two months after sending it back to you i was still manually opening the inventory going to the tool pressing on it pulling it out pulling it yeah you know and then completely forgetting that there's the hotkey system just because i for most of the games i've been so used to doing that yeah definitely what this game got right uh even though it is missing some other stuff is just the social aspect of it like i know this list's past birthday so yeah, how what was your like pandemic birthday like? Well, unfortunately, I think I think you visited and some other friends popped by because I had just an Animal Crossing birthday. Yeah, um, and I think folks that because like when the game first started, you know, in its initial months, people were having their graduation parties and everybody was yep. playing it, and I think most of the the people that maybe didn't have the reference for how new everything was and how amazing new iteration because most of the parts of this game are would almost be taken as a given yeah. whereas the people that have been playing the franchise a long time you know don't take placing an item somewhere outside for granted or something yeah, like that um, aside from storing it outside um but yeah i think by the time i was playing most people had kind of hit that that lull or they had found another job by that point you know in the pandemic and had kind of split off there was less movement in our uh, discord so i think you and a couple other people and i just set a thing on instagram and said hey come join my island if mm-hmm. you know and it was good um but it was only like three or four people and i decorated my whole island it was fun i honestly was like it's dumb to say but i because i've kept most of the same villagers i've started with i usually have an island full of monkeys and then a couple fun uh other ones from there um my little baboon boy is my favorite um and um but when i entered my house and i was playing on my birthday i wasn't expecting it and i was kind of bummed because you know it's pandemic i usually have a party at my house on my birthday and things like that uh and i usually tell people i'm not that vain i just have a party and hope people show up um but um but then all my villagers were there and surprised me and i like wasn't expecting it actually and i was like oh my god yeah, yeah and, then they, and then they give you all that cool birthday furniture too if you keep giving them cupcakes so i like decorated my whole plaza with that and my town's called festival so when you enter my town there is a literal festival happening kind of like a almost japanese style like there's a bunch of booths and things and lanterns yeah. and yeah the reason i asked about the birthday is because i also had an animal crossing birthday this year since it wasn't you couldn't have like you know real people over and um very different but very fun in the sense of like people that i normally like maybe would send me a birthday like you know text or anything but it's like friends and i can i got to hang out with you i also got to hang out with like friends in new orleans who like maybe just would like send a a text or whatever but it's like so all these different states together and uh, on one island was very fun and And it was like i feel like when people like to say happy birthday like people were like you know bringing gifts i feel like to the several different people's birthdays islands that i've experienced like you know uh, lots of bells or like cool items like really trying to dig and work so they could get something cool for their friend and it's just like so cool because while that's also really nice in real life it's just means so much more that it's like we can't see each other but you spent a lot of time trying to find you know a fireplace for me or something like that yeah, animal crossing absolutely. and we had a bunch of fun on i remember on your birthday like playing i think we played like hide and go hide and seek around your town or like mm-hmm. you know a bunch of other little games and got to know other people in the uh, the early discord days it was so fun to like 
hide and go seek or like we would play tag with the axe <laughs> like <laughs> run around <laughs> you know and the discord's still alive you just gotta make an at here post if you want anybody to see it um to alert everybody but we started to have you know i had some friends in japan that joined it we had some other friends in germany oh really i should get back on the uh uh, the Discord. There are again players that I think may no longer really be active that much, but you know, back then we were traveling and getting to see like the uh, the different building names and like how they were labeled differently mm -hmm. in uh, in Germany or France. Yeah. I love that in uh, in France. Uh, 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 blathers is called socrates um, really yeah and in wow. like germany the able sisters is something like schneidisch festen or something um which uh, was fun to see because americans are so rude blathers because he just like blathers on yeah yeah i mean it's a cute name either regardless but socrates is so sophisticated like the... right the godfather of uh, or, um, philosophy. Yeah, and although I will say, I think there's a little, there's more work put into the localization, I think, in the US mm. and Japan, respectively. Um, some things are unfortunately lost where I think they should just leave uh, certain uh, things that are, uh, translate to their culture and they're getting better about that with later editions of the game. Yeah. Just making them... Uh, um, but also we're losing some items in the game that were more culturally specific to say Japan or something like that. Well, even the, even like the sound, like the sound of the cicadas and stuff where like you uh, said, when you visited Japan, you're like, I feel like I'm an animal crossing right now. And I then, never. Yeah. And the first time I watched, um, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, there was like a scene where there was like just you could hear cicadas in the background and i was like this reminds me of animal crossing they like while we have really nice cicadas here in the summertime that'll all make like one cacophony of one kind of vibration together yeah they have like and i'm you know i'm no bug expert i'm sure somebody'd be like well we actually have like 20 different types but you actually hear like when i was walking around kyoto and stuff and i think i messaged you or that sent you that video and it was you know summerish weather and you heard up in the mountains eight nine different literally all the different cicada sounds you would hear in animal crossing and it was just it was yeah th little things like that i couldn't yeah it, it meant so much it was Absolutely. and it was nice because also i couldn't find any animal crossing merch while i was in japan so mm -hmm. it was nice to have the real thing <laughs> yeah totally um yeah um I feel like the majority of my questions we actually went through because I talked about like I one of the things I wrote, wrote down was what are your thoughts on the evolution of the game over the years and that and that we just we went into that like just that's something that like you know and we can always go a little bit longer if you want but I I just don't want to annoy people because I feel like every time I talk to somebody about the game I immediately start going like you know please play the original version of the game if you yeah. can get your hands on a copy or i will lend you a gamecube like because it is so important and so amazingly different than the current yeah. game and there are so many different aspects that like you know i could go on a fucking hour-long ted talk just about the differences that have changed over time from the previous one but like mm -hmm. in actually interacting with mr Rossetti. And getting yeah. all of that sort of goofy dialogue oh, yeah. where he would actually force you to type. They took him out of the game because they thought he was like too mean. Yeah, and made kids cry and stuff like that. Yeah. But it was, but I mean, I remember being a young kid and actually being like, oh, fuck, I got Rossetti, you know, like, yeah. because I, you know, I reset it because I wanted to, I fucked up on the raffle at Tom Nook's end of month, which there's so many things in the old game. Well, uh, decorating wise it was so much more sparse like you wouldn't keep a lot of items because you could only store three items per cabinet yeah and you wouldn't you'd only choose the design for your house which is also much more limited than the current houses and um 
So, but there were other things that actually kept you interested. So like every time you bought an item in Nick's shop, you got a raffle ticket yeah. and, it, and they were different for every month. And so at the end of the month, you would have really cool items. And I remember in Utopia, I got to our raffle the first time I got it. And there was, I was trying to get it because there was a, a suit of samurai armor, which is no longer in the game. The last iteration of the game that that was in was a uh, new leaf. And I think there was an NES console as well, which is a whole other thing too. Yeah, the NES with the NES games. Yeah. Now they're not going to do, I mean, you're going to buy online anyways, because you want to play with your friends. But now that they offer the NES like as a perk to like getting their their online like $25 a year or whatever it is. How many NES games were available in the first? I think 14 and the 15th is, or 13, maybe there's more than that. But I know that the final one, the final two, one you get from Tortimer mm-hmm. and one you can only get from a QR code. No, I'm sorry. One you can get from Tortimer or the e-card, the e-reader cards. Okay. And the, the final one is actually locked in the game's code and you can't unlock it unless you break the game. Um, Whoa. And I think, it's, I, think it's, I think it's Legend of Zelda. Really? Um, yeah, it's one of those big games that they have in there. And that's something else that people are like, I had a friend that played Why it. Why did the they first put time. it in the code? I think maybe it was too big or something gotcha. in and they just kind of left it out but it's still technically in the game i don't i can't remember i heard an explanation of why in the past but um the thing that was so amazing about that like yeah i had a friend that picked up and started playing trying the gamecube one and they were like i'm sorry there's full nes games in here what was yeah. nintendo thinking it was at a time that those games were only recent enough that they didn't see them as nostalgic worth money that they could reproduce yeah and it was only a couple of years before they started reproducing them on game boy and reproducing them on game boy advance and yeah. ds and stuff like that and you know doing their every iteration we're going to reissue these games to make more money off of them you know how many times you've bought mario and stuff mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. so a bunch of full nes games donkey kong etc um we're all in that game and something I consistently feel bad about every time I go back to our original town that me and my brother had was that he had his house was bigger than mine I didn't at that time I don't think I spent that much time making up my house plus my style is way different from back then I had all the modern furniture Uh Um, but my brother's house was like regal and his upstairs had these shitty little designed flame walls and floors and he had just all the consoles set up and i think somewhere when i was younger also no nostalgia attached to the game i raided his house when he wasn't playing the game anymore really just took all of his shit he had a string (laughs) fish in his living room i think i sold it but i remember what it looked like so slowly over time i've been rebuilding his house just to pay homage to its memory that's great but I feel so bad for my younger, like eight year old self being like, oh, he's yeah, I'm not gonna play this anymore. Let me raid his shit. Yeah, I would love to have, I I need to have you come over soon and water my flowers uh, because I need to get, you know, I, I, my town is very much taken over by roses and, and has been, but I still want the initial plan of blue roses everywhere. But it's gonna take forever because I've got, uh, like, what, let's see, one, two, three. I've got enough to make a square, which I think is four, five, six, seven. I think that's eight roses. And so I've got like 10 blue roses total. Wow. But I I found the only time it's ever spawned was having you over. I don't even think it spawned when I logged into Prometheus, my cats. Uh, I set up an account for my cat. Um, Gotta have more villagers. Yeah, I don't even think it spawned when I we both watered it. Because it's like same island. I feel like you have to have visitors water to really helps the probability of the flowers spawning. It's funny, as we're you know, getting back into spring and summer in the game. Um, I think the only hiatus I've taken in the game was maybe, a, I mean, during the uprising last year, I definitely, you know, I was still playing to kind of decompress at the end of the night after all the crazy shit, but um, on the streets and stuff. But I think it was maybe towards the end of last year, I took like maybe a week or so off, but I've really gotten back into like uh, revamping, uh, densifying my town adding flowers and stuff but speaking of your roses behind my house there's like a little pathway along a river and some stairs that kind of can either go up towards my like abandonish library or like further into the other side of my back into my town and 
I have some roses lined along the path, and those are the roses that you gave me the first week we started playing the game. Aww. And they haven't moved since, and now I like can't move them. They're like the only roses I have in my town. That's so funny. What color roses are they? I think it's white, yellow, and a pink one. That's so funny because the, the I mean the pink is cool, but the white is like just the white and the yellow are like pretty generic. So that's very very funny. It's and I'm not too. I know you're like heavy florist in the game. I'm very much just like I like to use it. Each flower has difference of color and pop, and also using like difference of flowers in certain areas just to be like they naturally would be in a town, kind of mm -hmm. in small pockets versus you know fields of flowers everywhere. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, I just I was walking by there and I started digging up some hyacinths I had nearby there to make a, a, a better path because I recently with the new update with more design patterns, I started implementing the original GameCube stone path throughout my town more. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, for there, I I turned towards the roses and was like, no, I can't I can't dig those up there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think say. I spread. I spread them because I think one new one grew because I opened the path a little bit and then I put it, I had some floating kind of islands you can hop on and I put those in like the center of my river. And uh, yeah. If I hadn't gone with the Twin Peaks theme, I wouldn't be so concerned about the, the blue roses because I know you haven't gotten to the, have you gotten the, to the return yet? So we just the other night finished the missing pieces. Okay. So blue, blue roses become like a bigger... Thing. Like they mention it in the um, in Fire Walk with me, because the the um, I forget her name. Was it Little Dill or whatever? The like woman in the like the red dress who like gives them signs about what their mission is going to be. She's wearing a blue rose, and he like brings that up. Um, Chris Isaac. I thought that was so wild. Yeah. So, but the. Blue Rose becomes like a thing in in the game or in, in the game in the TV show. So it's important in Twin Peaks town. Yeah, so I I, I think it's important. If if my town wasn't named Twin Peaks, I would probably just let Gold Roses take over because the Gold Rose Roses look really cool and they're much easier to spawn because you just get a couple black roses together, water those the gold can, you're good to go. You're good, <laughs> but you're good as gold. One question I was going to ask you. Uh, because I was pondering that if there was one, you know, larger update to the game, adding something completely different to it or new to it, and adding on to it, what would that be for you? Um, of course, bringing Brewster back and things like that are a given. Yeah, Ex I some form of expansion. Or I know it would be too hard because they have to do the whole like loading intro screen and everything. But the, the getting on the plane, like if they found a way with the Mario, the the tubes, the um, yeah, yeah, the pipes, pipes. If they found a way where you could like walkie talkie your way, I know it would be impossible because there's like safety concerns and everything. Sure. But like if I could just jump in a pipe and be in your town, I think that would be really cool. Um, expansion of the island in general, I feel like making things making things bigger, making things even more open world. Um, you do have a lot more space than the GameCube. The GameCube, the older games like feel bigger, but once you play them enough, you're like, oh, actually, like I the island is probably more space or like around the same amount. I think it is more space, but also yeah, the other ones feel bigger because there's Being there's actually a good. Being surrounded by water makes it feel smaller. <laughs> right. And I was going to say the same thing, expansion, just because I realized as I started to expand my town, I really wanted to have a balance between, because my town kind of operates with walking through the festival, you walk into the main city, mm -hmm. and then there's kind of a central island that's like my central park surrounded by rivers, and then like a kind of more hilltop, more rural, but still connected to the city sort of town. Um, or like little kind of connection. And I realized I've grown the city more and more. And it's like, like any city, it slowly kind of encroaches. And I've lost like any, almost any open stretch of just like nature in my town. Yeah. So I would like to, while I don't want to remove anything I built because I expanded my arcade, but I took up what used to be like a picnic park 
you know, and stuff like that. But I would like to have, you know, even if they all of a sudden an island just appears next to your island that you never noticed, that's in the yeah. water you could just hop out to and, you know, that the game would take some, you know, further rendering to do or something. Maybe when the, uh, the Super Nintendo Switch comes out, it can do that. You could do it uh, if you were like a big baller. You could do it. You could get a Switch Lite and then <laughs> make an island that's this is just my camping island and just like keep it all the weeds keep all the trees and just... literally thought about that because <laughs> back when the animal crossing when new horizons came out i got the new the new switch and i was going to stick with my original one because i absolutely love the, the fucking original nintendo switch that's my child but it's currently my mom's nintendo switch because she kept seeing me play Mm -hmm. and being over at her house and hilariously she started like having me help move her actual furniture around I was like you just need to get this game and she didn't have the money at the time so I just gave her my switch when I got the new one to use but eventually she does plan to get her own so I was like well I'll have an entirely like wiped clean new switch and I thought man do I start a new town and you definitely win like nicest kid award for like not only getting <laughs> your mom into the game but like yeah i want you to play this game here is my switch to... <laughs> granted you were getting the animal crossing switch and, you, and i did the same thing but i instead of giving it to my mom who I, as i don't think is interested in video games maybe i could get her an animal crossing maybe i should try my mom like the reason we had game consoles growing up is because my parents wanted to play them so like and my mom has always been like super technologically savvy so she actually started finding out things about the game i never even thought about certain ways of decorating using items that mm -hmm. i could have done even in past games and didn't think about until she thought about them from a whole new perspective she yeah. played the game so she just expected something to work and it did whereas i expected it not to work from coming from the game from the past and um but i did preface that you know for me my first you know, if anything, and I'm like a console collector, so I keep and I hoard all my old consoles and things like that. And I was like, this Switch is my baby. It's my original. I love it. You know, yeah. it's mine. You can play Animal Crossing. Yeah. But one day I will have this one back and I will get you your own. And I also made sure whenever I gave her it that like I took, I painstakingly, like I got the game early. I got it a day early because of my, I'm not going to say this too thoroughly, but a friend I have at GameStop. Uh, slipped it to me under the counter before they closed completely for COVID because they yeah. were going to close early the day that it came out. Yeah, my because I work retail in a video game store as well, and we were going to close early too. And yeah, they made the executive decision of like everything's getting shut down. Like we, because I think they might have gotten a heads up that the state was going to close down because they made the decision that they were, we were going to close down. And like my manager was trying, one of my managers was trying to like talk to the owner about like, can we just please stay open like a few hours the next day? Cause I know this game will sell really well. And they're like, no, sorry. And then we found out like later that day, like, Oh no, it's like a state rule. Everything is shutting down tomorrow. Um, but uh but yeah so they they sold it to me and anyone who came in and asked for it that night we sold Amazing. a copy too because it's like i know it comes out tomorrow but like everything will be closed and you're gonna you're gonna end up buying it on the e-shop and regretting it i would have gotten a huge jump start over everybody like easily like a i don't know 10 hour jump start but at the time, there wasn't cloud save backups, so the process to transfer all of my SD card data to a newer S to a larger SD card, oh yeah, and uh, and all of my switches info to another one, just to make sure that I wasn't going to lose anything going to my new switch, because that was the biggest thing. I had all these memories with Zelda and all the other games that I didn't want to lose, so I took like, it took me like cause I'm not good with technology too much, but yeah, it took me like five hours to get all that done and to make sure that I had every memory and every save on my new switch from my old one so yeah I was very specific about that process um, yeah but I look forward to hopefully the new you know them already working on the next iteration of the game because boy do I need it um, yeah I, I that's that's what I'm curious this will close out the show after this question, I think, because we're coming up, I think we're a little, about an hour. But yeah, the last question I want to ask you, because you're talking about how you want a new iteration of the, of the game. What do you see the future of 
Animal Crossing being, given that how much it sold? Do you think that, because from what I've talked to working in the, the video game, I don't, seeing I work in the video game industry sounds like a lot more pretentious than it actually is. I work retail at a place that sells video games. Hey, but, you get uh, some insider info, so. But we, that, that the, uh, there, well, the Switch being as popular it is, is like the speculation is that instead of being like a completely new console like the PS5, or PS5 what they're going to do is like a maybe a new version of the Switch, but you'll still be able. So I'm wondering, are they going to do another Animal Crossing game or are they just going to completely revamp it and just like, do you think it's going to be more updates? There won't be enough time for Nintendo to do. And yeah. it's It's like... At this point, it is so thoroughly confirmed that there is going to be, you know, and the name is the only thing that everybody speculates about, but a lot of people are hoping that it's called the Super Nintendo Switch instead of the new Nintendo Switch. And Nintendo Switch is getting to the point where it is becoming their best-selling console ever. So, you know, especially after their big last fall, uh, the last hurt console that happened with the Wii U and all the issues that happened with that. I think that, yeah, absolutely, it's going to be, you know, a new Switch. We don't know if it's going to be, uh, you know, like the lights handheld only, if it'll be more dock based or if the dock will kind of have more to it so that it can Mm -hmm. kind of offload some of that processing power or anything. But um, I don't think there will be enough enough time at all for them to do because that console will be dead by the time they would have developed a new, even that new iteration of the Switch in because they call it the Switch family with the Switch Lite and all that sort of stuff. So I think it'll be another iteration, a more powerful iteration um, of that. But I don't think that uh, that that will have to come on whatever is their next console. And to answer your actual initial question, because I was getting a little tangent there, um, what I think that what I hope they'll do and what I would dream of is that understanding the, the broad scope, Nintendo's good about their history but also they're also really good about never doing what we want them to do Hmm. they always go in you know every animal crossing is it's got different aspects to it because it's a different adventure it's like you know we don't have gyroids in this town because it's a brand new island nobody's been buried there there's no you know hanawa in the ground to dig up and stuff like that so but i hope they go back to the town model on land near an ocean but they use the new processing power that comes with the new generation because every new generation we get larger maps for games yeah and nintendo has you know they've always marched to be their own drum but they've kind of gotten the idea like yeah we do a lot of good indie games but we can also make our consoles pretty solidly powerful just to make our games look really good Mm. but they make that new city map you know uh larger and as uh editable and has the same history of the old games in that you reintroduce the things that made the game so weird. Yeah. The, yeah. the gyroids, the, the a different music set, you know, um, reintroduce being able to edit, you know, an island like the island we started with in uh, GameCube, which would be like three huge tiers, which there's similar parts and aspects to the to, in New Horizons and there are some people there's a great YouTuber that actually makes his town a GameCube town he doesn't have a lot of items out it's sparse just like GameCube and it's three tiers and um, I would love it if they revisited in the new game brought back all that history brought back the sort of changes that happened like all the Nook store iterations because that's what kept you playing a new store opened up way more stuff way more items and everything and uh, and I don't know. I dreamed about those little stores when I was a kid. I drew like Christmas drawings of the Nooks putting up like Christmas lights on TNT Mart and shit like that. Yeah, so absolutely. I dream of having those games back or the, like that sort of form of the game back. So I would just love to have everything that was in the old games, being able to edit the entire exterior like you can in this game, you know, maybe bring back the train station or maybe, you know, the processing power is enough that they do go to the new horizons in space and you have your town, but also you can go to a colony on fucking Mars. It'd be so fun. And if they did stuff with like different like gravity levels and stuff too. Oh my God. And captains like like your space captain. Yeah. Like when you walk around, it's like Cowboy Bebop where it's like on Mars or stuff like they have traditional gravity, but like, yeah, if they did. Yeah. I would love them to go to space because it's like, why not? Especially since they've done 
every iteration comes in with a different form of travel. Like the first one, the first very first game, you meet Rover on the train, and then in I think Wild World, I think that's when they do the car. Yeah, he's in a taxi in a Wild World, and then a bus in City Folk. Yes, and then in uh, what was it in New Leaf? New Leaf was the train again. Was New Leaf the train again? Yeah, because there's still the trolley. Yeah. It's it's not a train, it's a trolley. It's like it's a, a trolley. It's like yeah. a pa- passenger train. Yeah. Uh, and that's where you meet the... Yeah, because the city folk was the bus because you take the bus to the city. Right. Um, yeah. Rocket ship is the way to go. I mean, that now they, they've got a plane, a boat plane in New Horizons. I want Cap'n's uh, space shanties. Absolutely. Oh, that'd be so good. So good. One thing I was going to bring up randomly that's just a random update in the game. Have you noticed the Nook tokens you can get through the Nook link app? I haven't. What is that? So every day, which I've totally forgotten, I've only done it once, you can collect 10 Nook tokens and you can translate those into real in-game items that we haven't been able to access yet. You know, like whenever you enter the airport and there's those weird North Korean style looking photos of Tom Nook with like the writing next to it. And he's like on a hill with the sun shining on him. And he looks like Kim Jong-un or something. Yeah. Uh, you can now get that poster. You Are can you now get up. Yeah, you can now get other items. Yeah, the first time you log in and you collect the Nook tokens, you'll get 10, and then that poster is perfectly worth 10. So I got that immediately. I got to check that out. I might have even seen that update and not even known what it was. And I thought it was so funny because at the beginning of the game, like the Nooklings are talking about Nook like he's their fearless yeah, leader. Like, yeah, they're they're talking him fear, yeah, fearless leader. Yeah. And they're talking about him in front of these two posters that look like North Korean style posters. And I'm like, this is amazing. So funny. The thing I want more than anything in the new game, it could be the same map size. You could you could take away two rooms in the house. Let the creators, the original, um, and I'm forgetting his name right now. You know, let some creative legend iterate on the music of the original games and bring back music that actually keeps driving you to play the game because the current music i have a hard time staying awake while playing the game because it's almost the same like i literally swear to god every if i ever want to get to sleep i open animal cross and i'll be asleep in like five minutes just because it's like not because it's good and like lulls you to sleep just because it's like the same droning guitar tune yeah um yeah But that to me means so much going into a newer game and is such an integral loss. And one small thing I'll plug for anybody that's listening. If you have Google Chrome, download the Chrome extension called Nook. It is a extension you can have and you just click it. It's a purple square that has Nook's face and it plays, you can choose any of the games and you can choose rain, etc., and you can play all of the music from the game and it goes hour by hour. Are you serious? So what? if I'm doing chores around the house, I play the Animal Crossing music and it makes me feel like I'm doing Animal Crossing chores and they're That's not real. great. I did. And uh, I think yeah. that the creator of it asks for a donation now to keep it running, totally. but it's given me so much joy that I give him like a dollar or three dollars every month or something That's just to keep great. it going because I think it's so good. I promise for listeners at home, if you haven't played the original games, it's not just nostalgia speaking. Go back and listen through while you're doing your chores around your house or whatever. Just play through all the original tracks of the original game and you will understand the difference of the musical quality and the actual weird thoughts that went into some of those songs. And yeah, I think it's it's one of those striking features that really makes the game what it is. Absolutely. All right. Well, we are going to go ahead and stop recording. Do you have anything you want to tell the viewers at home before we go? Uh, go back and play the original GameCube game however you can or experience Absolutely. it however you can. Totally. Thank you so much for uh, for being on the show, Wes. Thanks. Keep playing Animal Crossing, everybody. 